So hello again. And in this video, we are going to go back and look at, uh, not a video that I did a few weeks ago, but a video that I got quite a few comments on a few weeks ago, which was the, um, the panorama that we did in Tobermory. Maybe you remember that we were on the, on the quayside in Tobermory. We took a panorama across the, uh, across the, 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 the town and the harbour at the front. And, uh, and I just talked you through that process. There's a link to that video just up there. Um, but the comment I got was, it was great that you showed us how to take the, how to take the panorama and you showed us the panorama at the end, but you didn't show us how to create the panorama in the computer, in Lightroom or in Photoshop or whatever we use. So Lightroom is the weapon of choice for this, uh, for this little exercise. And, um, and what I'm going to do in this, in this video is just talk you through that process of, um, of creating the panorama from within Lightroom. You may have noticed we're back inside. Um, we've not been outside for a little while now. The weather's turned, it's been raining recently, and um, I had a little bit of work done in the office, uh, so I've, I've moved, moved in here. Thought I'd try, try and make a video in the kitchen for a change. Um, one off, it's not going to be a regular thing. We're back in the office very soon. Um, but uh, yeah, so creating a, creating a panorama in Lightroom. So let's have a, let's have a look at the computer. Let's, let's get on there and, uh, and let's just talk you through that, through that process. So first thing first, uh, we have our panorama. So here are the images that we took on Mold that day um, that created our, uh, our panorama. And as you can see, we've got um, a hand on the left and a hand on the right. And if you remember from that from that video, we used a hand at either end just to signify that that is our panorama. And I've, I've just moved this out to a, a separate folder, so it's really, just really quick and easy to look at. So we've got uh, one on that side there. Um, phew, almost, almost blown that that one, but uh, we'll, we'll work with it. We'll work with it. Um, and then uh, we've got the, the the village at that side. So the way to do it, it's really simple in Lightroom. We need to select the images we want to use. I'm going to go for some bright ones actually. So I'm going to start there. I'm just going to use those four. I'm going to use those four there. I'm going to create a panorama from those four. So all I've done there is I've selected the first one. I've right clicked. Sorry, I've not right clicked. I've pulled my Shift key down and I've clicked again, and that's created my small selection group. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to right click. I'm going to right click. I'm just going to go down, 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 all the way to, where is it? Where is it? Photo merge. There it is. And on photo merge, I'm going to create a panorama. I'm going to click that. And this is just going to take those images. It's going to take a few moments just to pull those images together. And this is in preview. So this isn't going to be the final image. This is just going to be a bit of a, a visualization of what it thinks it's going to do. There it is. Uh, that's very bright, isn't it, that image? Anyway, don't worry about that. So let's have a look at some of these options. You can see straight away, it's it stitched that image together um, pretty well. You can't see the joins. Um, remember, we left a good third of the image every time we took a photograph and we used the same exposure throughout the image. We'll fix some of this a bit later on. But we've got our panorama there. Now, we've got a number of options on the right hand side. Let me talk you through some of these options. First of all, how we're going to create the panorama. There's three options here. The spherical, cylindrical and perspective. Now, I'll always say just click around and, and, and pick one that that works for you. Now I'm going to tell you what each one of these does. Spherical first. So if you imagine that you've got all your prints printed out, so in this case we've got four, four, four images and we've printed out each of the four images and we've got the inside of a sphere, a football, and we've cut that football in half and on the inside of the football we're going to paste our, with a bit of glue, we're going to stick our, our images and we're going to stick them to the inside of the football so they're on, 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 the, on the inside of a sphere. That's what Lightroom is going to try and do to these images. It's going to create create the the create the um, the panorama as if those images are pasted onto the inside of a football. Now this works really well for for long panoramas and tall panoramas. Um, landscapes it works particularly well. The next one down is cylindrical. This is more like a can of beans, or even this, this bottle here. So we chop the bottle in half, and imagine we can, um, length, half lengthways, and imagine we can then just paste the images around the inside of that bottle. You know, it's, it's only curved in one direction, a cylinder. 
And, and that's what Lightroom is going to do here. And this works really well with long panoramas because, because it can just handle that just going round the sphere. The third one is perspective. And perspective is none of that. It's a straight board. It's like a, like a chopping board that's over there somewhere in the, in the kitchen. Um, imagine just taking these images, sticking them on a board in a way that, that kind of looks like it, it'll work. Now, that, this works for, not for all types of images. And, and Lightroom itself can't process some, some of these sometimes. So you won't always get the ability to preview a perspective image. But perspective works really well for architectural photographs, for things where you need to keep the verticals vertical, because you don't want verticals kind of going around a bend or around a corner or something, keeping the horizontals horizontal. So it works really well for architectural photo photography and things like that. As always, I would always say, have a click and see what happens and see which one you, you prefer. So we're on cylindrical at the moment. Um, and, and probably, you know, based on this is just a straight row of, of, uh, of, of images, it's probably the one I would use. But let's, let's try spherical. Let's see what changes it makes there. Not a vast change, to be honest. In fact, I can't really see any change. Um, there is a very small change as you, as you click back onto, onto cylindrical. But actually, either would do, do well for this job. And if we click on perspective, it's going to build a preview, but you can see it's pushed it back a little bit. And it's tried to um, to make that architecturally correct. I'm not going to worry about that too much. I'm going to go back to cylindrical and, and keep that one. Okay, let's look at the next bunch of options down. Now, we're getting into cropping now. Now, you'll notice that around the edge of this image, we've got white bits. So just down here on that side as well, and you can't hardly see them up there, but there is white bits up there also. And... And that's where there's no image data. So as I've swung the camera around, there's bits of image data missing from different frames and that kind of stuff. And, it, and it's, kind of, it's kind of just put those in as white bits. We can automatically get rid of those by hitting auto crop. And what that's gonna do, is at least you're gonna slice the image top and bottom to, to get rid of those. And you'll notice if we look here at the top of this tree, when I put auto crop on, we do lose a little bit. Now it's not, it's not cropping anything off. As you can see, it's, everything's still quite nicely um, in the frame. Um, but if you've got quite a tight frame and you auto crop it, you might start to lose a little bit of the content of, of, of really what you sort of photograph off. We don't in this case. Um, so we could potentially use auto crop. The next one we have is boundary warp. Now, this boundary warp, if you, if you leave auto crop off, what this is going to do, this is a little bit like... Um, cloning because what it's going to try and do is as you grab hold of this little um this little slider here and move it to the right it is going to try and guess what's in those white spaces and by guessing what's in those white spaces it's going to fill them in and if we move it right the way to 100 percent we can see if we look at this area down here it has actually filled it in now it's not cropped it it's kept the same canvas size the same image size but it, what he's doing is kind of stretched bits out here and there and it's guessed a little bit and it's filled that area up and actually when you've got uh, an image like this which is kind of quite um, boring sea at the bottom and, and, and nothing of a sky at the top it can do that really easily if you've got a lot of detail in the image it, it will struggle with that and you might want to crop it of course you don't have to do that here you could leave it with the white bits um, and just create a panorama and in doing that, you then have to take it into Photoshop when you're finished and fill the bits in yourself, or you can crop it yourself or do anything you like. But this is a, a, a method within, within this panorama creation tool that just allows you to do that. I'm gonna leave that 100%. And then when you've done that, we just hit merge and away it goes. We can see the task up at the top and uh, it's creating that, that panorama for us. And it should put that straight back into this folder any second now. So there we go. It's done it. And as we can see, there's our image just popped straight in there straight away. Let's open that image up and have a look at it. So there we are. It's, a, it's very bright on the right, um, but we'll not worry about that too much just at this moment in time. We'll fix that in a second. Um, but we can see here we've got our panorama and let's just make that a little bit bigger on the screen. Let's get rid of those uh, blocks over there and let's get rid of some stuff over here. Ooh, we don't want all the menus out. Come on, go away, go away, there we go. And, and you can see there, if we zoom in, then we have got a phenomenal amount of detail in this image. This is a big, big image now. It actually looks like I've got a white vignette over there. It's so bright. Anyway, 
you can then treat this like any other image and, and give it a give it a uh, a bit of treatment in uh, in Lightroom. So let's have a quick do at that. I'm not going to show you exactly how to, to do each one of these steps, but I'm just going to do a quick edit just so you can see what I would roughly do. First of all, I'm going to get rid of all those highlights, um, which is which is fine. You can just see them, the hills in the background now. Um, I don't need to bring any shadows up because believe me, there are, there are plenty of shadows uh, that have been already sorted out because it's such a bright image. In fact, I could go the opposite way and take them down a touch. Uh, maybe just a little teensy bit. Um, the whites, uh, let's just have a fix of that. That's kind of okay. Let's do that. Body brown, let's put a bit of black back in there. Uh, let's put a bit of clarity on it. This is a bit surreal, this image, actually. It, 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 I don't want to dehaze it. Um, let's put a bit of vibrance on it. Not a lot, just a little dehaze will do. Nah, leave that one off. Um, let's. Uh, sort the detail out, let's put a bit of sharpening on it, let's take it up to 60, let's mask that out a little bit to about there, let's put a bit of a vignette on the edge, not a massive one, just want to just want to be able to see that you're drawing in a little bit, let's give it a crop, I would normally do this first, I think um, on this one I'm going to go to the edge of the white building, I'm going to come in there to about there, I'm going to get rid of some of that C, maybe to there. Okay, and I think let's try a let's try a graduated um, let's try graduated from the right, right the way across there to try and get rid of some of that. There we go. That's not too bad. Let's have a look at the color temperature, see if it's okay. Yeah, I'll leave it as it was actually. Right, so there we go. So there's our um, panorama. Let's have a quick look at that. And you can see that's that's not looking, not looking too bad. It's, it's looking half respectable as a panorama. You clearly spend a little bit of time on that. I mean, that building there in the middle looks a little bit red. I might want to just have a play with the HSL panel just to sort that out. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, not a bad image. Um, but that's how we create panoramas in Lightroom. As I say, here's a link to the original video um, that, that showed you how we took the panorama in the first place, the tips and tricks we used there and the process we went through to get a consistent um, image. And uh, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, then please, do subscribe to our channel. There's a button down there. Give it a click, 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 click. Um, there's also some buttons down here. Give us a thumbs up. Let us know that you like the video. And we'd love you to leave a comment. Um, so yeah, let's engage with us. Leave us a comment, thumbs up, subscribe, all done. Uh, that's it for this video. I really hope you've enjoyed it. Until next time, um, thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.